systems administrators have a diverse set of roles and responsibilities. They can range from configuring servers, monitoring the network, provisioning or setting up new users and computers, and more. Think of system administrator as a tech generalist. They handle many different things to keep an organization up and running. It's actually very similar to how IT support specialists work. You need to apply your diverse set of tech skills in different situations to help solve problems in an organization. In a small company, it's usually a sysadmin's responsibility to decide what computer policies to use. In larger companies with hundreds of employees or more, this responsibility usually falls under the chief security officer. But in smaller businesses or shops, as the IT lingo goes, the sysadmin has to think carefully about computer security and whether or not to allow access to certain users. There are a few common policy questions that come up in most IT settings that you should know. Should users be allowed to install software? Probably not. You could run the risk of having a user accidentally install malicious software, which we'll learn about in the upcoming course in security. Should users have complex passwords with certain requirements? It's definitely a good rule of thumb to create a complex password that has symbols, random numbers, and letters. A good guideline for a password length is to make sure it has a minimum of eight characters that make it more difficult for someone to crack. Should users be able to view non-work related websites like Facebook? That's a personal call. Some organizations prefer that their employees only use their work computer and network strictly for business. But many allow other users so their employee can promote their business or goods on social media platforms, stay up to date on current events and so on. It will definitely be a policy that you and your organization's leaders can work out together. If you hand out a company phone to an employee, should you set a device password? Absolutely, people lose their mobile devices all the time. If a device is lost or stolen, it should be password protected, at the very least, so that someone else can't easily view company emails. Another responsibility sysadmins have is managing users and hardware. Sysadmins have to be able to create new users and give them access to their company's resources. On the flip side of that, they also have to remove users from an IT infrastructure if users leave the company. It's not just user accounts they have to worry about. Sysadmins are also responsible for user machines. They have to make sure a user is able to log in and that the computer has the necessary software that a user needs to be productive. Sysadmins also have to ensure that the hardware they're provisioning or setting up for users is standardized in some way. We talked in an earlier course about imaging a machine with the same image. This practice is industry standard with dealing with multiple user environments. Not only do sysadmins have to standardize settings on a machine, they have to figure out the hardware lifecycle of a machine. They often think of the hardware lifecycle of a machine in a literal way. When was it built? When was it first used? Did the organization buy it brand new or was it used? Who maintained it before? How many users have used it in the current organization? What happens to this machine if someone needs a new one? These are all good questions to ask when thinking about an organization's technology. Sysadmins don't want to keep a 10-year-old computer in their organization. Or maybe they do. Even that's something they might have to make a decision on. There are four main stages of the hardware life cycle. Procurement. This is the stage where hardware is purchased or reused for an employee. Deployment. This is where hardware is set up so that the employee can do their job. Maintenance. This is the stage where software is updated and hardware issues are fixed if and when they occur. Retirement. In this final stage, hardware becomes unusable or no longer needed, and it needs to be properly removed from the fleet. In a small organization, a typical hardware lifecycle might go something like this. First, a new employee is hired by the company. Human resources tells you to provision a computer for them and set up their user account. Next, you allocate a computer you have from your inventory or you order a new one if you need it. When you allocate hardware, you may need to tag the machine with a sticker so that you can keep track of which inventory belongs to the organization. Next, you image the computer with a base image, preferably using a streamlined method that we discussed in our last course, Operating Systems in You. Next, you name the computer with the standardized host name. This helps with managing machines. More on that when we talk about directory services later. 
In regards to the name itself, we talked about using a format such as username-location, but other hostname standards can be used. Check out the supplemental reading to find out more. After that, you install software the user needs on their machine. Then, the new employee starts and you streamline the setup process for them by providing instructions on how to log into their new machine, get email, etc. Eventually, if a computer sees a hardware issue or failure, you look into it and think through the next steps. If it's getting too old, you'll have to figure out where to recycle it and where to get new hardware. Finally, if a user leaves the company, you'll also have to remove their access from IT resources and wipe the machine so that you can eventually reallocate it to someone else. Imaging. Installing software and configuring settings on a new computer can get a little time consuming. In a small company, you don't do it often enough where it makes much of a difference. But in a larger company, a time consuming process just won't cut it. You'll have to learn automated ways to provision new machines so that you only spend minutes on this and not hours.